action there well, is. How much does that worry you? So this was an issue when the telephone came out. Um, if you go back to the history of communications, everyone has had this concern, and yet humanity has flourished during this period. So it looks to us like the connectivity, these devices and so forth, amplify human communication. They allow you to get more things done. But we don't see people spending less time with their loved ones as a result. They may just share it a little bit with their distractions that are going on, but there's an off button for that. What is your message to folks who are out there? Some very comfortable with technology, others literally frightened of it, feeling that they are way behind when it comes to understanding where we are. The good news is that in my professional career, computers have gone from being essentially impossible to use to being very, very useful at many, many tasks. You think about the ease of use with which you can watch a video, answer a question, sort of navigate. The new mobile phones and tablets are just so much better than anything that preceded them, and that's going to continue. Eventually, these devices will become very good at anticipating, this is again with your permission, the things that you care about. You'll carry them around. They'll make interesting suggestions. They'll become sort of your best digital friend and make your life fundamentally better. Eric Schmidt, Jared Cohen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And you can watch more of our conversation online, where we discuss what it will mean when the poorest people in the most remote regions of the world gain access to the web. And finally tonight, a grisly addition to early American history. Founded in 1607, Jamestown was America's first permanent English settlement. Virginia Company of London established the colony 60 miles north of the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, naming the site James Fort after England's King James I. But life there was anything but easy. Historians believe the settlers arrived during the worst drought in 800 years, and disease, starvation, and conflict with nearby Native Americans plagued the colonists. Accounts from the time tell of residents forced to eat dogs, cats, rodents, and even shoe leather to fend off starvation. And it appears it was even worse than that. This is James. Researchers have now revealed evidence of cannibalism in the remains of a 14-year-old girl found in a trash pit at the colony site last summer. Forensic anthropologist Douglas Owsley says cut marks on the cheekbones and skull of the girl they've named Jane support the theory she was butchered after her death for consumption. From my experience working with prehistoric skeletons where I've seen post-mortem, meaning after death, processing of remains, this is absolutely consistent with what we've seen cannibalism in those types of cases. How Jane died remains unknown, but researchers say there was no evidence of murder. In all, some 80 percent of the colonists and members of a relief fleet sent from England died before the situation stabilized in 1610. And joining us now is William Kelso, Director of Archaeology at the Jamestown Rediscovery Project. He directed the team that unearthed the young woman's bones and is author of the book, Jamestown, The Buried Truth. Well, thanks for joining us. Now, there have been written accounts of cannibalism in the past, right? So is this something you were specifically looking for? Well, this, there are written accounts. There are like actually six from six different people. Uh, but they're all very enigmatic and they're uh, hard to follow. Uh, and I personally uh, didn't really believe that they were that, that true um, uh, be because I, I thought they were making political statements back to the Vir sponsoring Virginia company uh, to send more supplies. But uh, uh, the fact that we have those and now we have the forensic e evidence and also the archaeological context where we found uh, these remains in, in a layer of soil that we can date to what was called the starving time of 1609-1610. And, and, and as to the, the evidence, fill in the picture a little bit more that, that lets you know that it is definitely cannibalism. What are the signs that make this so clear cut? Um, the, uh, the marks, the cuts, uh, that are on uh, the cranium, the skull, uh, and uh, these are the things that Dr. Owsley has pointed out uh, are uh, all add up to uh, someone wouldn't make these marks unless they were removing soft tissue and the brain uh, from from this uh, from the skull, and there are just scores of, of 
of sawing like cut marks where you know that the only reason that they could be there is to, to remove the flesh. What, what uh, we said that we don't know much about, well, we don't know how the, the young woman died. What do we know about her? What can, what, what can be said? Well, we don't know her, her name. Uh, we've named her Jane, as in Jane Doe, because uh, to give her some kind of a personality. But uh, we don't we don't know uh, her name because the ships that came in '69 that brought uh, several women uh, did. There's not a list of their names, uh, but uh, we c we can know something from the fact that most of them that came were either uh, uh, the the uh, daughters of gentlemen or uh, would be maidservants. Now, what, so what, what, is the, what is the significance for you of something like this as you're looking at this long-term project of trying to figure out what happened there? Where, is this a big surprise? Is this a, a, a major step to know sort of, I guess, how, how serious it was at that time? Yes, that's certainly true, and, and it, it has been, had a, quite an impact on me. I, I think that uh, archaeologists can, can deal with uh, uh, you know, material culture artifacts and get some feeling for the people, but it's when you come face to face with something like this. Uh, in, my, in my case, I, I have a, a much more of an empathy uh, for the situation they were in uh, and the fact that uh, Jamestown same, came so close to failing. Uh, and uh, I think the, the course of American history from that point on, from this first permanent English settlement, would have been quite different had it failed. Uh, well, Phil, that, I mean, are we still learning more about what that winter was really like and how, what a close call it really was? Well, I think so, right off, because the, there are these accounts that you can, you know, take as a grain of salt sometimes. Uh, but now I'm convinced, you know, this, this is, this happened. And to be reduced to that uh, level uh, of starvation uh, is hard for a modern person to even uh, imagine, uh, but I think now we can because uh, here is here is conclusive proof. I feel uh, that that took place. And, and and what's the next step for you, or what 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 are you? What's the next uh, thing that you're most concerned to look for? Well, we are still excavating in a, a cellar room that became a kitchen or a bakery a site down below ground. Uh, now that level, that layer uh, that was of uh, soil that w that uh, uh, Jane's remains were found in, uh, of course that's been excavated. But there's the floor levels of the kitchen, and we just started yesterday, uh, and more today uncovering those layers. Now I don't expect to find more of that uh, of that uh, situation because uh, the the layers above is where we found it. But uh, we can learn a lot about the starving time from what uh, was thrown around in that in that cellar, and it's a, quite a thick layer. And the, the site is open to the public; uh, and they can see us do these excavations uh, right up front and close. So um, we're we're sharing our moment of discovery with the public as we do our research. Okay, William Kelso on the archaeological discoveries at Jamestown. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Again, the major developments of the day, President Obama visited Mexico to promote jobs, trade, and immigration reform. April was the bloodiest month in Iraq in almost five years, with more than 700 people killed in bomb attacks and other violence. And the body of the Boston Marathon bombing suspect, Tamerlan Sarnayev, has been claimed. A funeral home retained by his family picked up the body this evening. Online, a campaign to get Americans used to hearing the words, Madam President. Kwame Holman explains. The progressive women's group Emily's List unveiled an effort to help elect the first female president of the United States in 2016. We take a look at polling and some potential contenders. And among presidential candidates of the last three decades, who still carries campaign debt? We look at a new report from the Center for Pub from, of Public Integrity. All that and more is on our website, newshour.pbs.org. Jeff. And that's the News Hour for tonight. I'm Jeffrey Brown. And I'm Judy Woodruff. We'll see you online and again here tomorrow evening with Mark Shields and Michael Gerson, among others. Thank you and good night. Major funding for the PBS News Hour has been provided by.
More than two years ago, the people of BP made a commitment to the Gulf, and every day since, we've worked hard to keep it. Today, the beaches and Gulf are open for everyone to enjoy. We've shared what we've learned so we can all produce energy more safely. BP is also committed to America. We support nearly 250,000 jobs and invest more here than anywhere else. We're working to fuel America for generations to come. Our commitment has never been stronger. BNSF Railway. And with the ongoing support of these institutions and foundations. And this program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Thanks our members and community partners for their support. Readers of the San Francisco Chronicle get journalism backed by a century and a half of experience. Chronicle writers, columnists, and photographers provide in-depth reporting for Bay Area residents. More information is available at sfgate.com slash special. It is the largest collection of state parks in the nation. More than one and a half million acres protected within 278 parks. They are visited by more than 80 million people every year. Parks that preserve the storied landscapes that define California. California Forever. The story of California State Parks. Tonight at 8 on community-supported KQED. We're likely to find genetically engineered foods at the ballot box and the supermarket. After nearly 20 years of eating them, questions persist. You have nothing to hide. Go ahead and label. People want to know. Go ahead and tell them. It just has one gene that's different that allows us. Comcast Channel 25. The meetings can also be viewed on the city's website. Our technician tonight is we're not sure because we don't have one yet. And uh, as a reminder, if you have a cell phone, could you please turn that off he's during back, the meeting? He's back there. There now. Oh, yes? Oh, yes. Well, we don't know who it is yet. <laughs> and uh, if you come up to speak to the podium, if you could please sign your name for the record so it gets included in the minutes. Okay. With that, First thing I'd like to do is introduce our new community development director, Rich Gruno. Welcome, Rich. Rich started on uh, the 22nd of this month and came from the San Diego area. And uh, we're glad you're here. It's been a long time that that position has been filled by an interim person. So, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, that brings us to additions, deletions of the agenda. Are there any, uh, Danielle? I just want to clarify that item. Public hearing item 5B, fan, 305 Fanmar, is continued to uh, the June 6th meeting. Okay. The reason it was publicly advertised was because they asked for continuance after the noticing went out. Okay. So 5B has been continued to the June meeting. Any uh, comments from the Planning Commission? Oh, I just have one. Um, as the representative um, on the Art and Cultural Commission, I wanted to bring um, the attention to the artwork that is now um, in place at the back of the room. The Art and Cultural Commission has worked long and hard to find a way to um, have rotating public art, and this is the first um, display that we've got, so take a look at it. It's um, SoCal High Students, a sur surrealist style environments using linear perspective. So 
you'll see artwork appearing and rotating through. That's it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the commission? I'm going to come back to public comments. Any staff comments? Seeing none. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on any item that's not currently on the agenda? Yes, sir. If you come up, state your name, please, and sign the, the roster there. Absolutely. Good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Peter Kellison. I'm a resident at 302 Fanmar, which is where Fanmar and Terrace intersect. And I'm here to comment very briefly on the um, uh, what was 5B pulled from the agenda. Um, I'd want to note that um, we appreciate the continuance that was granted as our view was to be obstructed by that. But really I wanted to state for the record that we had no notification of the project and didn't realize that it was underway until we received the postcard for this hearing in May. So I apologize for not being part of the process prior, but we had no, no way of n knowing it was uh, underway. We've contacted the owner. They've been sensitive to our concerns as well as others who would be impacted, and we appreciate their sensitivity uh, regarding massing and the view elimination. And I'd like to state just for the record that going forward as this has been continued, hopefully there'll be ongoing dialogue with all the st different stakeholders regarding the, a historic term as it applies to code, um, netting hopefully to demonstrate the scope of the project depending on what that project is, and any on-street parking implications. And with that, I would conclude my remarks for the record. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kelson. Anyone else have any comments on any items not on the agenda? Anything? Seeing none, then we'll go to item three, which is the approval of the minutes from the April 4th meeting. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? I have a correction. On, on page six, uh, about three quarters of the way down the page, it states that Commissioner Ortiz recalled participating in the discussion when the ordinance allowing the extra height was created saying the intent was to give people who are remodeling your words were older homes I feel like my words words were historic homes and then in the second uh, phase of that sentence it says some leeway to get m more room in smaller homes as long as they keep the and I would like the word historic prior to integrity and that those are all the okay. Any other? Uh, I'll move the minutes with the necessary corrections. I'll second. Is there a motion to second then to approve the minutes as corrected. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to item four, which is the consent calendar. All the matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the Planning Commission votes on the action unless members of the public or the Planning Commission request a specific item to be pulled and discussed. And items pulled will be uh, considered in the order they are listed on the agenda. So, Ron? I'd like to pull two items, 4A and 4C. Okay. Anyone else? And I would like to pull item 4B. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that pretty much <laughs> takes care of takes everything. Takes everything, okay. <laughs> okay. So there's no point in asking members of the public if they want to pull everything because everything's been pulled. Okay. Let's take item A first, 120 Monterey Avenue, the interpretive uh, kiosk. Uh, my reasons for pulling it, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, is um, the way it's listed on the agenda, it, it sounded to me like they were going to be put uh, Soquel Creek interpretive signs in a new kiosk in Esplanade Park. I've been assured that they are not, but uh, <laughs> but they're doing two things, or at least they were anticipating doing two things. One was putting the kiosk in the park, and the other was to upgrade the existing uh, interpretive signs along the creek. I understand that the money has not been found for the interpretive signs along the creek, and being that staff is here, she'd like to talk a little bit about it. So there we go. Lisa? Uh, I'll just clarify. Um, it was originally the intent was to incorporate it as all one project was to do the interpretive signs down by the creek. If you've seen their fish signs and habitat signs and they're on both sides of the creek and it turns out there's quite a few of those signs and the restoration project is going to be a little bit more expensive and we were, going to, we were trying to coordinate them together but we broke them apart because the budget was just $15,000 so we'll attempt to do that at a later time. 
Uh, so we're just focusing on the kiosk at this time, and I have some uh, materials up there too. If you have any questions, there's a mock-up of the design. There's a, a material sample with the kiosk will be made out of a stainless steel, and it kind of has a wave sort of effect if you look at it. And then the, the tan one is what the otter, the coating on the, the otter that's going to sit on top, that's a bronze sculpture, um, will look like as well. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. I do have questions, yeah. and maybe questions of staff. Um, what are we being asked to do tonight? Uh, well, the instruction was to have the planning commission uh, needed to approve the project because it was signage in the village, and that from here then the council will give final approval to the project, and then we'll go forward. Okay. So I, I spoke with Council Member Termini today, and it was his impression that we were going to be giving our okay or, or not on the size, the placement, but you're saying also the design. That's my question is, you know, being this is the first one that we've ever had yeah. that has come to us. I think we need to be clear about what we're being asked to do and wh what our parameters are, so we don't overstep our parameters. I agree. Yes, and so the the um, it is it's the sign, it's the height, the dimensions, and the placement of the uh, the kiosk, but the actual design. Um, and the elements that it's uh, composed of, that's the Art and Cultural Commission. Actually, ultimately, the, the uh, City Council has the authority if they may um, change what the features of it might be, but it's the actual approval of the placement of the object th in the uh, village. So we should not give any opinions on the design tonight? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> it's you. so hard to say that. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? See none. Any member of the public want to comment on uh, the interpretive kiosk for the Esplanade Park? See no one. Then we'll bring it back to uh, the Planning Commission. Comments, discussion, motion. I'll, we uh, can't comment on anything. We want to comment. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> well, as the representative from the Planning Commission on the Art and Cultural Commission, um, the only thing I, I can relate is that a lot of thought went into um, you know doing the, the call to artists and, and selecting an artist for the, the project. And the location and the size of the, the kiosk is meant to be, um, you know, big enough so that the visitors that come to the village can get information that we, we want them to have and yet to make it classy enough that it's, it's not going to be an eyesore. It's going to be good signage. It's going to present, um, you know, a positive perspective of, of Capitola and an artful one. So I would personally move that we approve it. I do have one comment about the location of that. When, um, when the buses and the vans pull up with folks who are disabled and who are seniors from um, retirement homes and whatever to the uh, Twilight concerts, they do pull up in that area and they unload. And so we should just kind of make sure that we're aware of, of the placement. And I, I, I would imagine that Council Member Termini is because he's <coughs> always down there. But it might be, it, we could just check on that. I think it's worth looking at. Okay. Was there a second to the, to the motion? I could second. Okay. I just, I just had a comment and looking at the pictures of the otter sculpture. Maybe it's a bad picture, but it looks more like a dog with an otter's tail. And uh, I, did, I did talk with uh, <laughs> Mr. Termini, and he said that this is just a rough of it, that it's going to look a lot more detailed, and her work is really beautiful. And okay. Because otters don't have those big pug noses that stick out like that. They have little flat faces. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, who's, who's going to be the overseer of the otter sculpture? Okay. <laughs> Okay, then we have a motion to second to approve the uh, interpretive kiosk. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to item 4B, 4980 Capitola Road. Uh, and Chairman Ruth, I'm going to have to oh. recuse myself from this one because I live within 300 feet. Okay. This is converting an existing office into a duplex. And the reason I pulled this, Richard Danielle, was because... I've read the staff report. I've seen your comment on the parking, the six spaces, but I'm really concerned about the lack of landscaping that's going to occur when we convert this into a, a residential unit. And since it only needs four parking places uh, per code, I would prefer to see those two 
additional parking places in the front turned into landscaping because it appears because of the carport construction we're going to be actually losing landscaping that's true yes. so I guess my question would be since they're entitled to have all those spaces that already exist can we condition it that two of those spaces be removed and replaced with landscaping yes as long as they maintain four spaces total right okay okay so that would certainly be be my request of the, of the Commission to consider that and perhaps continue this item until we can get a, a landscape plan for the frontage on that building could we ask the applicant if they're amenable to that mm -hmm. is the applicant present yes what was your question well my concern is if, which you probably just heard the, the the six parking spaces which is really two more than you need and the lack of landscaping because of those two additional uh, parking spaces and if you would be amenable to remove those and create some additional landscaping in there um, if we don't have a choice yes <laughs> <laughs> okay well so maybe one maybe they could have five and, and one might be enough to to satisfy us and that's a good compromise that would help yeah I think any any additional landscaping would help yeah I, I think so too I think looking at four cars straight across is not necessarily what we're striving for okay so I'll go over it with the owners but I'm sure we can come out with something that would work for everyone That'd be great. okay okay so uh, then we can continue this item till the June meeting then to until uh, we come up with a revised plan then so you want to revise uh, more of a site plan with landscaping yeah. showing right keeping at least uh, or eliminating one of the six parking spaces yeah perhaps the one on the far right when you look at that's the, the one I was thinking yeah. would be the easiest one to get rid of yeah okay okay so is then is there a motion to continue the item well, to the June uh, meeting or I'd just like to say something. comments Ron yeah uh, uh, while I understand your client may like to have more spaces uh, uh, car spaces it with four spaces or four cars plus two in a carport it looks like a sea of cards absolutely I don't want to you to go away tonight and think that I will vote for just one space having some kind of landscaping I want to see the landscape plan before I commit myself so I'm being right up front with you okay, okay. so you want to see four spaces only I'd like to personally but if you can come up with a great landscaping plan and still retain five spaces I may vote for you but I'm not going to give you a bond check tonight blank check tonight okay thank you okay thank Any you the comments I, I had a question for staff what what are the landscaping requirements it's actually just the uh, two feet on either side of the drive is what's required but typically when you develop a residential unit in a CN zone you have to conform to the residential standards That's correct. and that requires no parking in the front yard setback and that and that landscaping it's actually a CR district regulation a, and it right. doesn't refer you to any other regulations like the CN district does if if it if it did when this is brought back can you uh, make sure it references when the code was changed because uh, there should be a date because I concur with mr. Ruth the intent of the CR zone was uh, to if they were going to develop residential then you go with residential specs uh, with regards to setbacks and the rest of it and if it's commercial then we make some allowances yeah that's why the Linda Key homes are like the way right, they are the way yeah. you're okay so uh, we'll continue this item then till the first meeting in June okay so is that can I ask a question yeah so the first meeting in June is that when it's going to be voted on and decided or if you have all the plans submitted so we can review them yes okay yes okay, okay. thank you and I think we're just continuing I don't think we need a motion to continue it do we do we need we a motion do. to continue it yes. okay move. second all in favor aye aye opposed motion carries okay thank you we'll see you in June then okay that brings us to item C which is 100 Oakland Avenue and this is a permit to remodel an existing single-family dwelling unit on a multi-unit property on Depot Hill uh, mr. chairman uh, I pulled this item for a number of reasons I've talked to staff uh, over the weeks uh, that this has been in the hopper here type of thing I'm concerned with 
first the way it is advertised on our agenda. It's advertised as a remodel to an existing single family dwelling unit on a multiple property in an R1 zone. It's a fourplex, folks. It's got four meters out there. It's got garages attached. And when you remodel to a single family zone, you would have uh, rear and side yard setbacks to adhere to and all this other. Having said all this negative stuff, I really like the design and everything, but it became very hard when you go out and view the property. Um, it used to enjoy an address on Grand Avenue for the front unit that we're talking about. Uh, this application, of course, has now moved the address to 100 Oakland, which is the side street or the street that you enter on. And then it becomes apparent to me, does 100 Oakland be the front, become the front yard, and then the north side become one of the side yards, and of course the bluff become the other side yard, and the backyard be uh, the, uh, the area immediately east of the dwelling. Um, I just think that when we have applications like this, and I've never seen it advertised uh, as a single family dwelling when everything's attached, uh, you can go out there and see one, two, three, four, and clearly know where you're going to each one of the units and how you get it. There is a breezeway attaching one to two right now. The meters are between one and under two. Um, I just think that we need to be more clear that what we're really doing is allowing the front unit of this fourplex to become a, a single family residence with all the conditions that uh, would be enjoyed in a single family residential zone and all the, the uh, uh, requirements. Uh, I really like the design. The neighborhood likes the idea of what's going to be done out there. I'm just unhappy with the way it was uh, advertised. Any other comments? No, I mean, it's always been a single family home that I know of because yeah. it was Bob Tomaselli's. Yes, it was Bob's and yeah. I've been in the living room many yeah. times, but it's if you look at how two is attached with the breezeway over the carports and the rest of it, and then the carports uh, share back-to-back -back walls with no space between, and when you make 100 the address, where's your side yard set back to the north, or are you considering the bluff side being the front yard, which it used to enjoy a Grand Avenue ad address? You know, I, I, it was just confusing when you go out there. Okay. But everybody likes it. <laughs> I don't think you're going to have any problems. Any comments on this item? If none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion to second then to approve the uh, application at 100 Oakland Avenue for a remodel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to item five, public hearings. Uh, public hearings are intended to provide an opportunity for the public discussion of each item listed below on the agenda, and the procedure is as follows. The staff will make a presentation. There will be a public discussion. The Planning Commission will comment. They'll close the public portion of the hearing, and the Planning Commission will discuss and make a decision. So our first item under public hearings tonight, and our only item since item B has been continued, is 355 Clare Street, and this is for a use permit, conditional use permit, to expand an existing coffee house and establish a wine bar with a sale and dispensing of alcohol. Danielle, Rich. Uh, the applicant is proposing a conditional use permit to expand an existing coffee house into an adjacent commercial space um, it, to become a hybrid coffee shop and a wine bar, and this is located at Brown's uh, Marketplace. The use permits required for the sale and dispensing of alcohol in the Community Commercial Zoning District. Uh, although it's a little faded, the existing floor plan is the coffee shop, and this is a vacant space which was previously the Weight Watchers uh, business. Pretty much the floor plan will stay the same, kitchen area, uh, tables and chairs, a lounge, a very small meeting room uh, that can be rented out, and a wine bar. The tenant improvements are just new interior finishes, a small wine storage area, de uh, retail area, and there's no ex exterior alterations. The proposed hours are changing. Um, 
in your staff report at 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday, Friday 6 to 10 p.m., Sunday 7 to 9. The wine <coughs> bar will open at 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturday at noon. Saturday and Sunday at noon. In this corner, there is a small stage. They intend on using it for just acoustical music, and there is a condition to address remaining acoustical only. The chief of police has reviewed this, added some conditions along with the ABC for their liquor license, and uh, staff is in support of the proposed expansion and use. Okay. So with that, uh, any questions for staff? What is is the 10 o'clock pretty much the, the maximum time that we allow businesses to stay open in that center? I know many years ago we had some complaints from the neighbors in back, and we changed and modified the hours of operation for some of the businesses, or, or at least addressed that. There, so there, I believe it is set for the center. It is true. And yes. it's this, this is in line with that. It is. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for staff? It's a public hearing, then we'll open it up to the public. Is there anyone wishing to comment on this application to uh, create a wine bar in addition uh, to the coffee house in the Brown Bowl Branch Center? See no one? Okay, we'll bring it back uh, to the Planning Commission. Any comments, discussion? I move approval. I, in light of your earlier question, um, I remember that uh, the issue with regards to hours of operation really uh, dwelled not so much on the business's hours of being open, uh, dwelled on deliveries. And I would like yeah. to see us include one additional condition that the hours of delivery for the rear delivery uh, be adhered to from that previous. Uh, I think that's part of, yeah, and I think putting it in the conditions is a good idea, but it should be part of every business in that area, in that because that was the major concern. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. I have a motion then and a second to approve the application to create uh, the wine bar in the Brown Bulb Center. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Hey, Good luck. You're welcome. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Item 5B is continued until the June meeting. Director's report. Do we have one? No report this time. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. <laughs> Any uh, commissioner's reports? None? Okay. Well, you know, I, there may be one, I, and I and Lisa's left. Um, they, I was supposed to be the uh, member for the Commission on the Environment, and then the City it's Council chose to suspend it. Suspend that for yeah. six months, but there was something that came up about a, a meeting they were having anyway uh, or a dinner or something and we we all received an email and I think maybe is it already gone by or has yeah I think but I just want to my understanding is the City Council did vote I was actually there at the City Council meeting so that uh, the Commission on the Environment is not going to be I understand they may have some ancillary or ad hoc meetings outside the scope of Capitol is that the way it's working yes okay which I don't think I necessarily have to be part of the, the, at that point. Right. Those aren't just, was, just wanted to confirm. You just that. wanted to give up my previous job. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was you good. skated on that one. Well, first it was mine. And then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from the commissioners? If not, Rich, glad you're here again. Thank Welcome. you very much. And uh, the meeting is adjourned. Oh, no, no staff comments. No. 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 no we. Are.